Hello, and welcome to this first short talk on the liturgical year, today especially focusing on the season of Advent. Before we speak about Advent, however, perhaps it's worth thinking a little about the liturgical year itself. The liturgical year is a chance for the Church to celebrate each year the great mysteries of our salvation in Christ. The great Paschal mystery, that is, the life, death, resurrection and ascension of Christ, by which we are saved and made free, is such an amazing and deep mystery that no one liturgy can really capture more than a fragment of its wonder. And so, year by year, the Church offers us the chance to bring that eternal reality of Christ's saving work into our own time. It offers us, feast by feast and season by season, the opportunity to reflect on the depth of Christ's saving love for us, as we reflect as a Christian community on the events of Christ's earthly life, as described in the Gospels. The liturgical year is complex in its origins. For the earliest Christians, the primordial feast was Sunday, the commemoration of the Lord's Day, the day of the resurrection, that greatest turning point in human history. As the church grew and spread, and especially after it became a religio licita, or legal religion, under Constantine in 313 AD, other developments occurred. From the second century onwards, one Sunday, close to the Jewish Passover, began to be celebrated with special solemnity, the origins of our Easter. And once that feast was established, then other chronological events from the Gospel could be given a place in the calendar. For example, celebrations of Christ's entry into Jerusalem a week before Easter, our modern Palm Sunday, or the day of the crucifixion, the Friday before Easter, our modern Good Friday, or the celebration of the Ascension, 40 days after Easter. To these Gospel feasts were also added anniversary feasts. Initially, the commemoration of the martyrs on their heavenly birthdays, that is, on the anniversaries of their martyrdom, and then later greatly multiplied in the feasts of other saints, bishops, virgins, and other holy men and women. Slowly, and by a process of convergent evolution rather than deliberate design, the liturgical year began to take on its modern complexity, paralleling the former Jewish festal calendar with its three great feasts of Passover, Pentecost and Tabernacles, and its other annual celebrations, such as New Year and the Day of Atonement. One of the features of our liturgical year is the liturgical seasons, Advent, Lent, Eastertide, and so on. Historically, the earliest of these to develop is Lent, a long preparation for the Feast of Easter from the 3rd century onwards and in the Christian West, especially associated with the preparation for baptism at Easter. We'll return to speak about Lent in more detail in a future talk. Advent is a much later development, though, which broadly parallels Lent in its purpose. The Feast of the Nativity of the Lord, celebrated on the 25th of December, appears comparatively late in the Christian calendar. Its first recorded occurrence is in the Philokalian calendar for Rome in 336 AD. As the Feast of the Incarnation, the celebration of the Nativity spread rapidly in the West, and as its importance was increasingly recognised by great theologians, especially Pope St Leo the Great, so, a period of liturgical preparation for so great a feast gradually grew up. Just as Lent prepared the Christian people for the worthy celebration of Easter, 
so now Advent, literally coming, that is, the coming of Christ, performed the same liturgical function of preparation. Early documents suggest the season was first observed in Francia, modern France, in the 6th century, although it seems to have been unknown in Italy at this date. St. Benedict certainly makes no mention of it in his Rule for Monks, written around 540 AD. Originally starting as a period of six Sundays before Christmas, and thus exactly paralleling Lent, by the late 7th century it had settled at its current length, beginning four Sundays before Christmas. In our modern liturgy, the four Sundays of Advent reflect the medieval theology of the season. Theologians like St. Bernard spoke of three comings of Christ, the historical coming of Christ in our human flesh at the first Christmas, the second coming of Christ at the end of time to be Lord and judge of all, and between these two, a third mystical coming of Christ to the faithful, his presence with them in prayer and in the sacraments, and especially in the Eucharist. In a sense, perhaps, our modern Advent seems to work the wrong way round. On the first Sunday of Advent, the Church sets before us the final, second coming of Christ as judge at the end of time. In this, it picks up the theology of the Feast of Christ the King, that Jesus Christ, the crucified Saviour, is the Lord and King of all things, the source of all life and all authority, the source of our ultimate hope. The Lord calls us to stay awake, to stand ready for his coming as judge, to keep on working out our salvation through prayer and good works, so that the Lord will find us ready when he comes. On the second and third Sundays, the liturgy sets before us the figure of John the Baptist, the herald and forerunner of the Lord. John the Baptist's call to repentance and conversion colours the whole of Advent, echoing the many readings from the prophet Isaiah we hear in this season. God has promised to send us a saviour, has promised us that he will be Emmanuel, God with us. But each day, each year, we need to prepare our hearts to make him welcome, to recognise him when he comes. It is only on the fourth Sunday of Advent that we begin the proximate preparation for Christmas, with the Gospels of that Sunday focusing on the angels' messages of the coming of the Messiah, first to Joseph in year A, then to Mary at the Annunciation in year B, whilst in year C the Gospel is that of the visitation of Mary to Elizabeth. In this great last week of Advent, paralleling Holy Week in Lent, we hear of the prophecies and events surrounding the birth both of Jesus and of John the Baptist, until we reach the great day of Christmas itself with the Nativity narratives read at the three Masses of the Feast. In this same great week, we sing the famous O Antiphons at the Magnificat at evening prayer. These great antiphons address the coming Christ with his prophetic titles from the Old Testament, O Wisdom, O Key of David, O Emmanuel, and so on. They are perhaps familiar to us from the great Advent hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. These antiphons are great prayers of longing, great prayers of desire for the kingdom, echoing the cry of the church throughout all, the, all times, seen in those last few words of the book of Revelation, 
Come, Lord Jesus. Advent is a time of expectancy, of joyful waiting and preparation. Like Mary, we wait in hope for the coming of the Christ, her Lord and her Son. Like Mary, we too need to become tabernacles of the Word, so that in the words of the second preface of Advent, he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. One of the great glories of the liturgical season since Vatican II, and a real difference from our former liturgy, is that each day of the season has its own Mass, with proper prayers and readings for each day. Perhaps it's not possible for everyone to attend Mass daily in these great days of Advent preparation. But those prayers and readings are available in so many ways, in print, online and so on, that perhaps each one of us could spend a little time with them each day, pondering God's faithfulness to his prophetic promises from the Old Testament, pondering the amazing gift to us of his only begotten Son, the Word made flesh, in the babe of Bethlehem. Let's conclude our reflection with a prayer. The Collect for the Third Sunday of Advent. O God, who see how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's Nativity, enable us, we pray, to attain the joys of so great a salvation, and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing, through Christ our Lord. Amen.